Welcome to the Raiders Training Camp Podcast, presented by SiriusXM. Live from the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center, here are your hosts, Jesse Merrick and Eddie Pascal. Well, Raider Nation, we are back. The team is back from Canton, and we are here in the pod studio for another episode of the Raiders Training Camp Podcast, presented by SiriusXM. Eddie Pascal joined, per usual, with my guy, Jesse Merrick. And Jesse, you and I were talking before we started rolling. The team played, and we're going to talk about the game, the 27-11 to win over the Jags uh, the other day. But we are back fully. If I can't believe I'm saying it. We are back for another incredibly normal week of training camp. <laughs> we are. It, it almost feels like we're resetting camp. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we had so much time off after the Hall of Fame game. So it was nice to get back out there at practice, you know, kind of get going again. It has that feel of like, all right, let's dive back into it. And this is kind of like a normal game week setup, too. Yeah, it's it's unique in so many ways, and you and I are going to talk about the upcoming, excuse me, the upcoming schedule here in a little bit. But going back to Thursday night, and I haven't talked to you since uh, the Raiders won that game, twenty-seven to eleven. An interesting game. We had the weather to deal with. There was a lot of things going on. Josh yeah. McDaniels gets to go home. Um, we don't need to dive too deep into the nitty gritty of what happened, but I guess just your big kind of top line takeaways from the, uh, the what we saw on Thursday night. Yeah, I mean, look, one of the big storylines that shouldn't have even been a storyline from the get go was the whole Josh Jacobs playing and everything like that. You know, and, and Josh McDaniels kind of put that to rest after the game, but also today as well. He doubled down on yeah, it. Yeah, he did. And like, look, I think let's take the guy for what he's saying. Obviously, coaches aren't always going to tell you everything, but I think this is one where it makes sense. Like, it doesn't make sense to trade him for what you would get in return. What you can get by having him on your team for the money that he's doing it for, boom, you keep the guy. Outside of that whole hoopla, man, Zamir White. Looked great. I was really watching the offensive line for me, really trying to get an eye on, uh, you know, Brandon Parker playing the swing tackle role there. Obviously, you know, some ups and downs. Not as bad, I think, as everybody made it out to be. Uh, you know, on the right side, we got our first look at Lester Cotton, you know, in a starting role there. I think he looked the part at times, looked very physical, looked good in space in the screen game. And then Alex Leatherwood also looked very good. But to me, the most impressive lineman that I saw throughout that one, I went back and watched it again, was Jermaine Illuminor. Played amazing. He played all over the place. I believe he was right tackle, left tackle. I think even a little bit of left guard at one point, and and kind of dominated guys at times. And I don't want to you know overreact. It is a game against the Jaguars, twos and threes, you know. But having said that, he looked really good and very versatile. And we talk about that versatility, right? And it's yeah. the name of the game when you're talking to Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels. But the one thing, and dude, I know that you and I sound like a broken record talking about it. The one thing that they bring up over and over and over again yeah. is how much they value players who can do different things. You had a great tweet about Dylan Parham uh, on Thursday night because he went all around the uh, offensive yeah. line. He went center, right, ta- excuse me, center, right guard, left guard. So all those interior uh, jobs, he he played for a little bit. And then the same with the Luminor. And we talk about the Raiders over the next month are going to figure out who their best five guys are. And it doesn't matter the the combination now, but we're going to see a ton of different combinations. But the one thing that we know and we have seen and we have learned from this new regime, the more you can do, the better. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, this line is going to be in a blender you yeah. know, throughout all the camp. I think the only guy that we're not going to see change positions is going to be Andre James. That's the only guy I have seen play. Col- Colton position. Miller. Colton Miller ain't yeah. going anywhere. I guess that's a know? good point, too. Yeah, I forgot about Colton there. Which is a great uh, thing, right? Yeah, it's no, a yeah, good thing. Exactly. And so you've got those two guys that you know aren't moving around. you know. And, and seeing all the moving parts is huge because think about over the years. What was it, two years ago? You oh, know? yeah. Remember the Bucks game? You know, I mean, there were guys, you know, just, hey, anybody can play O-line. They were about to call you and I up in there. I mean, know? dude, I, in 2020, I mean, it seriously felt like it was a different five guys every yeah. week. And we're not even being, you know, you know, we're not saying that with tongue in cheek. Like, that was the reality for yeah. Tom Cable and that group is it felt like, you know, of those 16, 17 games, you probably had 13, 14 different starting lineups. And so the the point is this, that you need to have depth on the offensive line, right? And the odds are that even if your guy who's not starting – you're probably going to get some burn at yeah. some point in the season, and you have to feel good about your sixth lineman, your seventh lineman, your eighth, ninth, and tenth, all the way down. Yeah, and I would say the thing that's different with this coaching staff is now we're actually seeing that in practice more than we have ever. Like These guys are getting real reps at those positions consistently and being put in those situations, and so that's what I think will pay dividends when that time undoubtedly comes. Obviously, we hope it doesn't happen, but it's going to, and so having guys that have been there, done that, like throwing Brandon Parker in there in a game against the number one overall pick, that's great reps and great practice to figure out what you need to work on. Yeah, Brandon Parker, who missed practice today, and yeah. we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But uh, I think for me, when I look at the game on Thursday night, and, and I think it's hard because you have to remember, 
this is the Hall of Fame game, yeah. right? Like it's too hard to, to dive into anything. It's too hard to take, you know, these grand uh, ideas, these theses or theses. I don't know what the proper term is for that. I should yeah. ask my graduate student wife what <laughs> yeah, the word is. But it's hard to kind of read too much into it. But for me, I think you hit the nail on the head with Zamir White. I think that seeing him go about business, very exciting. And, and Jared Stidham too. Jared Stidham, yeah. I should say. A guy who went in there and he's a guy that you and I have both been watching through camp. And we were very curious, what does this backup quarterback battle look like? And I think round one goes to uh, to Mr. Stidham. Definitely. I mean, he showed that he's got a command of this offense, as he should, having played in it and everything like that. But he looked the part again, you know, and that's something I'll say a lot when we talk about some of these guys. But that's half the battle is going out there and looking like you belong in that role. And so to me, he definitely has a firm grip on that one. And again, you mentioned Zamir. And I've heard some people on Twitter and everything say, like, oh, you can't get a read on what somebody can do in the preseason, specifically a back and it's like, yeah, you can. Yeah. You know, you totally can. The guy showed great burst, and you don't you don't need anybody coming at you to be able to show the burst. He showed some hands as well. I think he had like three or four catches, if I remember, off the top of my head. Don't have my computer on me. But um, he, he, you know, showed something that I didn't think he necessarily had in his game, in the receiving game. Three catches for 23 yards, yeah. averaging, averaging just under eight, uh, eight yards per reception. That'll do for a back, man. 100%. That'll do. You know, and, and look, they were throwing screens up the yin yang. Oh, my God. It was uh, like, dude. I mean, I hope no one's playing the drinking game of like, have a shot when, <laughs> yeah. the, when the team plays, runs a screen, because man. to your point, it was screen after screen after screen. Red but Nation would have been lit. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's good because you get to see your offensive lineman out in space a little yeah. bit if you do that. You get to see the big boys rumbling down the sideline, mm-hmm. which is always fun. But uh, I did notice that same thing, too. I was like, we are, we're really screen happy right yeah. now. Yeah, and that's something look, like that's been a staple of the New England offense. Obviously, they're not going to give away all the secrets sure, in the sure, preseason. Sure. But, you know, seeing that was good, as you mentioned, too, seeing the big hog mollies out there running around. Like One of the tweets that I sent out, and this is a term that I love, they didn't look like cows on ice. You know, they're out there doing their thing. And so, uh, you know, I was, you know, I left feeling very encouraged for that group, for the running backs, everything that we saw, and even more so kind of solidifying the fact that this is going to be a running back by committee. Uh, and speaking of those running backs by committee, uh, Austin Walter, a guy who really came out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, with all due respect to Mr. Walter, I, I can't say that I had his number circle on my roster all that often the first couple weeks of camp. But, I mean, he finishes his day. Eight, uh, eight attempts for 49 yards, over six yards a pop yeah. and a touchdown. Have a day, man. It's a new Trey Regis in yeah, the house, man. I mean, man. You, know, you, you got to love that. So I, it was good to see him come in and able to get those reps and take advantage of it, you know. Uh, and that's what you want to see with a guy that just comes in. And uh, like you said, not a guy that, to me, during practice where I wrote his name down a lot, but after the game, that's where those guys and those storylines emerge. And that's the beauty of, of kind of having the extended preseason for the Raiders this year, where your undrafted guys are going to get a chance to show what they do yeah. or what they can do. And we see this every Every single year, man, you've seen it as many times as I, there's going to be one or two of these undrafted dudes or or guys that come in kind of low profile signings that are going to make this roster. We see it every year across the league. The Raiders are no, uh, are no exception to that rule. They've done a really nice job in years past in kind of finding those diamonds in the rough. And I'll be really excited to see over the next three weeks what that, that kind of looks like. Uh, But one more thing before we move on to to what we saw at practice uh, today, the cash money, man. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> 55 yards in the rain, dude. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I knew you could Are you let that kidding me? Go. Yeah. Oh. Hey, look, looks like he's in rare in midseason yeah. form, you know. Oh, and yeah. That's what you need. You you love that, you know. Obviously, he, he missed what one today at practice. I know you were counting watch. I think it was just the one. Was it just, I the, think one? It was just the one? So I mean, you're like, look, those things are gonna happen. But yeah. he looked good in the game. He got it done. Exactly. A clutch you know? player, dude. Yeah. Clutch player. Also, too, though, before we move on, gotta give a shout out to the defense. You know, again, it, it's the preseason. It's the Jags twos and threes, but they held them scoreless for the first seven possessions. That's a win right there. Hundred percent. And I think for me, before we move on to what we saw at practice today. What we saw on Thursday, and I mean this in the best possible way, a lot of boxes got checked. Yeah. Right. I think the Raiders came out. They looked prepared. They looked efficient. Uh, we we didn't see a ton of the pre-snap penalties that we've seen in years past. Like they came out. They did what they needed to do. To your point, uh, they held the Jags uh, scoreless for what was it, the first seven. You first said? seven. Yeah. Offense looked good. Moved up and down the field. Chase Garbers, I think, had a nice series or two yeah. kind of towards the end. I mean, they checked a lot of boxes. I think we're both kind of preaching. Don't read too much into this. Yeah. But what you wanted to see out of this group. First game under Josh McDaniels, you that we got what we wanted, right? They checked those boxes, and now we're moving on to the Vikings. Yeah, I mean, it's very much a you know the uh, you, the team reflects the coaching staff, you know, I think in in many ways, and in this case, it did in a good way, you know, where this this team is coming in looking like a much more business like group going in there about their business, getting it done. And, you know, I think that's where you like to see that in the first preseason game. As you said, you don't want to freak out and overreact to it, but, Definitely a good box to check off with that one moving forward. Also, he noted, too, the defense. He thought he did a decent job. You know, Josh McDaniel said they thought they did a decent job of uh, communicating and then needed to work on some of their run fits late in the game, you know, and man-to-man coverage. But those are things 
I think where you get that value of having the extra preseason game to know what you need to work on moving forward. Perfectly said. And speaking of moving forward, the Raiders, we were back on the practice field today. Yeah. We were on the indoor practice field today. Ooh, Jesse I love Mary. it when we go inside. Oh, it's a good day. Yeah. And ironically, though, it feels like the days that we've been on the indoors, it's been like kind of nice outside. It has been. I know, you know? it like, works out that way every time. It does. But the Raiders uh, enjoyed the weekend off, so they had Saturday and Sunday off. And I do have to clarify this. I feel even silly saying this. Uh -oh. I tweeted out over the weekend. I was like, hey, man, thanks to Coach McDaniels for giving the, the guys the weekend off so we can all enjoy uh, the Premier League's opening weekend. I got a couple of tweets that were like, oh, I can't believe he's doing it. Guys, he didn't give the team the weekend <laughs> off so they could go watch soccer. Yeah. I promise you that. That's, that's simply not the case. That's pretty great. Now, did I enjoy it? Absolutely. I was yeah. parked on the couch for two days watching, watching balls. Fantastic. But the team was back in action today, back in the indoor. Uh, and it felt like we were talking about kind of the uniqueness of the schedule. This is a long stretch now for the silver and black before yeah. they ultimately play again on Sunday. So to me, from my untrained eye, it felt like one of those days, kind of a ramp-up day. It was kind of a throwback to those early in-camp practices where, yeah, guys are out there, they're getting into it. You know, we kind of had some of those goal line sets towards the end of the day. But it wasn't the, you know, hair on fire, let's get crazy kind of Monday practice. Yeah, look, even when they first started practice, I heard a couple of the coaches saying, hey, where's the energy at? You know, kind of needed to get things going. And like you said, light that fire and get it going. So, you know, that's the thing where it's a Monday for everyone and coming off of two days off, you know, you got the first game under your belt, you know. Guys actually hit for the first time in a while, too, so you know you're dealing with the recovery aspect. Um, but that's good practice to get used to that now so that that doesn't creep up later. Yeah, and the team's back in pads today, too, so yeah. I think that the, getting back in pads, getting the, the feeling of being hit again is good. And certainly, look, a training camp practice on a Monday is not what they did on Thursday. Right? No. They're two very different levels of physicality, right. but all the same. Good to see the guys getting back out there. For me, uh, one thing that really stood out to me, and I feel like, once again, I feel like a broken record. Man, Hunter Renfro is a lot of fun to watch on the goal line in particular. I mean, this dude is just, he is an artiste. He is really, really good at what he does. And especially from our vantage point, seeing him down there, you know, inside the tent, I mean, it's a lot of fun to see him go to work. It is. I mean, I said it to you when we were watching. The guy is just so compact. And that's obviously not something that we didn't already know, but seeing it each and every day, you know, the consistency that goes along with it. You can just tell the DBs are on edge when the guy's out there running his routes, you know, because he is so shifty. You know, he's able to put down those three and four move routes at the goal line that many other guys in the league aren't able to do, you know. So he's just so enjoyable to watch. I also like down on the goal line, we got to see a battle kind of brewing maybe that maybe we'll see more of between Nate Hobbs and Devontae Adams as well. A couple good reps between both of them. Yeah, and I think the Nate, and you and I have talked about this a bunch, both on the pod and off the pod, I am so fascinated by what Nate Hobbs' role in 2022 looks yeah. like. Because you and I have both seen the same thing. He's falling around Devontae a lot. He is. It's not a rep here. It's not a rep there. He is falling around Devontae a good amount of practice. So are we getting the inkling perhaps Nate is headed towards the outside in 2022? I do not know. We probably won't know for real until September 11th. But he is a guy that is immensely fascinating to me to watch over the next month or so. Yeah, I think, you know, that's one of those things. I was thinking about that as I was driving down at the facility today. You know, just random thoughts that kind of pop yeah. in your head. And I was like, you know, Nate Hobbs, where is that going to come across? You know, and I think it was uh, in our training camp preview pod. We were talking about the questions we were asking and whatnot. Uh, I think one of the ones that I asked was whether or not we we're going to see Nate on the outside. And we have started to see that now. And he played it in college. He played it in high school, you know, you know, being a guy that's done it at a high level. We just haven't seen him do it consistently in the NFL. And much like they talk about with the O-line, they're going to put the five best guys out there. Why would you want to limit the guy to just being in the slot? Having said that, the slot's going to be out there a lot, and the slot is a very important position on a defense. But I would imagine we're going to see this guy at both positions throughout the year. And again, just kind of continuing to build that depth and getting the guys those reps in case he needs to step out there if he doesn't end up being the guy on the outside. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that, and you said it perfectly, where it feels like you're, you're kind of nickel corner as a, a de facto starter now anyways, exactly. right? Like, I'd be super interested to see, and this will be a great project for us at some point when we have a free time in nine months. Yeah. But I'd be curious to see, like, the average amount of snaps that a, that a nickel guy plays as compared to a dude on the outside. And obviously the guys on the outside are going to play a little bit yeah. more, but I, I, I'm curious what that percentage difference is. It's probably smaller than we both think. Also, too, I'm curious, you know, over the last three, four, five yeah. years and or so. And how much you has know. changed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Cause, and especially now in the AFC West, given, <laughs> you know, the guys, the horses. Five wide, baby, division. let's go. Exactly, Like, and that'd be exciting to watch. Yeah, you man, know? it'd be great. Yeah, I think Nate Hobbs would be the first one jumping out there, like, let's get it going, baby. Yeah, I mean, it'll be a lot of fun, and, and I think over the next month, and, you know, 
I don't think we're going to see a ton of Nate Hobbs over the next month. I mean, we'll see a little bits and spots yeah. here. I think I imagine it'd be a little, it'd be very similar to what we saw on Thursday night. Maybe ramped up ever so slightly, but I, I the the world of seeing Nate Hobbs play for a, play a half of football over the next month. I just I don't think I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think we will either. And as you said, I think maybe get ramped up. Give him, you know, I think he what had two series, three series. I think I it was three. Yeah. So I mean, you know, give him maybe four or something like that. And I think that's good work. You know, do it, do that against whoever the top receiver in the game is at that point. Yeah, and, and kind of let the game dictate it, right? Exactly. Like if that guy goes out, okay, maybe Nate, yeah. day's over. But uh, another guy who I think we are not going to see a lot of in the preseason, but I think has had a really nice training camp, is Max Crosby today. Yeah. Max had a, had, had a back-to-back uh, set of plays where – he just ate, man. He just ate. He's in the backfield. He's constantly there. You can hear him. You can hear uh, the excitement in his voice. You can hear his voice, period. Yeah. He's a loud, vocal dude <laughs> in the best possible way. But I think he's very kind of, you know, we talk about checking the boxes. I think Max has very much done that over the past several weeks. And as I said, I don't think we're going to see a lot of him, if any of him, over the next month. But uh, good to see 98 doing his thing. Yeah, checking the boxes, Check also him. being accountable as well. You know, today he took a lap because he jumped offside on the hard hard count. And as he ran by all the media members, he's like, got me with the first yep. hard count. That was the, the first time we've seen seen Max take a lap in camp. So the guy's obviously disciplined. Um, but again, showing that leadership to go, hey, time to take that lap. You know, it's funny. I was uh, when he, he right after he took the lap, I think is when he had those back to back plays where he was just kind of yeah. cooking in the backfield. And I turned to Rachel, who works with us on, Raider, uh, works with us on Raiders.com. And I said, I think he's going to be pretty all right, Rachel. I think I think he's a good football player. Yeah, I think he's 2020. He's halfway decent him. at this, this yeah. thing we like to call football. Yeah, I mean, but it's, you know, <laughs> He's a guy that I cannot wait until week one to see him kind of do his thing for real. Yeah. Because I think, look, I know that we've kind of gotten on people for, oh, he looks so great in, in shorts and whatever. And it's like, okay, he should. He's a you know high-level NFL yeah. player. He should. But I think he's a guy who has really stood out in camp. I think that once he, once uh, Patrick Green can let him lose, it's going to be a lot of fun to see what he does in 22. That's the thing. You know, like everyone – gets to touch the quarterback, you know, not not like in the sense of like when you're in a game and mm-hmm. things like that. But think about the guys like Max that aren't going to play in the preseason, that aren't going to be able to actually tackle a quarterback to the ground until probably the first game of the year. I mean, as much as guys are chomping at the bit to hit somebody, I can't imagine those guys are like a dog ready yeah, to jump man. off the leash. Ooh. Like, I mean, so I could only imagine what the hunger is like for a guy like him, you know, as that point goes. I mean, they are, as you said, we can hear him. We see him running by, tapping the QBs yep. on the hip, you know, getting in the backfield. I think he, at least today, two two to three would be sacks, mm-hmm. you know, and and he's that guy, again, that's got the length, the athleticism. He's going to get plenty of PBUs, you know, and break and batting passes down at the line. Uh, there was an interception today on a tipped pass. I don't know who hit it. It was uh, – I have that for you. It was – who came down with the interception as we – Oh, well, the, so the, the interception was, was uh, Hobbs got the tipped pass. Got it. Yeah, he, he intercepted. I just don't know who it was that oh, tipped it. Oh, yeah. got it, got it. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's – you know, I think we've talked about the DBs a lot, and yeah. I think that we've both been pleasantly surprised by kind of their – excuse me, their collective effort. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that it's been really good to see it sustained, right? I think yeah. that if you're a group of DBs, and you and I talk about this, it's a position of failure, right? But to, to consistently see them being around the football, to making to make life miserable for the wide receivers, I mean, it's – I know we still have a lot of questions that we need answered over the next four or five weeks, but uh, in terms of checking the boxes, that is a big box that has been checked, at least from my point of view. Yeah, for that group, and we talked about it on the previous pod, the simple fact that it is a back-and-forth battle with this very talented receiving core. You know, not many of these guys look out of place, mm-hmm. and that's a massive thing to be able to say – because there's so many people, I think, more so outside the building than anything that have so many question marks. You know, you hear nationally all the storylines when they talk about defensively with this team, they're like, oh, the secondary, oh, the secondary. And I'm sure and I hope that they hear that, you know, because maybe add that little bit of the chip on the shoulder there, you know? Yeah, I mean, and look, at the end of the day, as long as they're comfortable and confident in what they're doing in, in this building and they're doing at camp, getting a little bit better and a little bit better, like yeah. as, us as fans, as us as people who cover this team, work for this team, like that's all you can ask for, right? If they're getting better, they're improving, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's it. That's a W. And let the chips fall where they may and let's – Watch this AFC West go five wide for the next 18, 19 weeks. That's yeah, all we want. Exactly. That's the thing. I think we're going to see plenty of five wide. You know, We're going to be throwing it all over the yard. And, and these DBs are going to get a lot of work. And, again, w- what better group of receivers to go against? You know, That's where, again, bringing a guy like Devontae into this system here is going to pay dividends. Yeah. In terms of things that we're going to see going forward, Jesse, we're going to see a lot of practice yes. going forward this week in particular. And – we are entering now, and we saw this when we got the training camp calendar. We knew this kind of portion of the of the camp was coming. We're entering a very unique portion of the calendar where we did our admittedly quite terrible math before <laughs> we started rolling. The Las Vegas Raiders are now playing three games in 18 days. So yeah. we have the full week of practice this week. We're going to have the 
home opener, in quotes, uh, against the Vikings on Sunday. And then the team is going to play the following Saturday in Miami. So you have two games in a week. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to come home and wrap up the preseason against the New England Patriots. So we're going to get a lot of football in a in a pretty condensed amount of time, which is a lot of fun. We really are. And like, let's not forget the Patriots are going to be in town That's doing right. joint practices That's as right. well uh, leading up to that game. So there's going to be not only a ton of practice, but a lot of really good work that week specifically. That's I'm, I think I'm looking forward to that week against the Patriots more than any other, just simply to be able to see this good on good, similar type schemes and systems, you know, and also to see what it looks like from the Patriots and a lot of the guys that have been there and done that. You know, and that's they talk about it. I remember uh, being out in L.A. last year. They were saying, you know, you get so much more. All the starters, at least, were saying you get so much more out of these joint practices than you do the preseason games themselves. Yeah, I mean, you and I had so much fun doing doing oh, the yeah. pod from uh, that fancy hotel we were at, yeah. wherever it was. We were in L.A. somewhere, but mm -hmm. when we, we were kind of in that equipment closet that turned into a conference room. <laughs> but we had a blast. But to your point, man, I mean, the work that we saw those two days between the Raiders and the Rams – arguably better and more impactful than anything we saw in the preseason. Exactly, because that's the thing is that's where you can throw things out there. Like, look, let's be honest. Like, these two coaching staffs are as familiar as they mm -hmm. could ever possibly be. So there's not going to be a whole lot of secrets. And, again, they're going to have their tweaks. They play later in the year, so they're not going to give away everything. But that's where I think we're really going to see the competition ramped up between the ones because that's going to be your opportunity where, like, look, you can only go against your own ones so many times because yeah. you start to figure out their technique. You figure out what they do, the things that they always kind of lean on. Going against a completely new group of guys when you're not going to, you know, game plan or anything like that against them because it's the preseason. Like, now you just get to go out there and work on the things that you fall back on, your techniques, and boom, and see, see how it does and kind of measure yourself against a team that's perennially been a playoff group. Yeah, and it's going to be, look, we were talking about it. over the next 18, 19 days, we're going to see a lot of football. We're going to see a lot of games. We're going to see a lot of yeah. practices. Uh, we're gonna, we'll preview uh, Sunday's game later on this week. But I'm curious, just over this next stretch, call it between now and Friday, what do you want to see? What boxes do you need checked by this team? I think, you know, I think we're going to see things kind of ramp up a bit in practice, which I know sounds like so cliche, but just simply in the fact of like, you know, they were going through all the install and they are still going to continue installing from now till the end of camp. But, you know, what that progression really looks like, you know, maybe we do see more speed, more tempo from the offense, you know, throughout the week. Things obviously hopefully look a little crisper. Uh, you know, Josh has talked about it multiple times that there's things that they do need to continue to work on, which isn't going to change from now till the end of the year, <laughs> you know. But, uh, you know, I just think I want to see things, maybe the tempo increased a bit, and you start to see more of the understanding from these guys, you know, and maybe less of the conversations that pause practice to work your way through things and more of the communications on point. Guys are moving. Guys clearly have that understanding of it, having had the game under their belt. Obviously can't say that for the starters, but – you know, you continue to see that kind of progression through them as you move on uh, through the different pods of install. And, and you and I have talked about the, the energy a lot in particular today, and I think that naturally the energy kind of takes a, a level up once when you progress through the week, but two, when you get back outside. You know, I think that there's yeah. something about football being played outside for Cam during this time mm -hmm. of the year. I think that naturally you kind of get that, that emotional oomph, yeah. for lack of a better term. So I'm with you. Like, let's see how we ramp up through the week. It'll be interesting to see how Josh really handles a week this week because, to mm -hmm. your point, very game week-esque. We have a lot of practice. You want guys, the guys that are going to play anyways, to be as yeah. fresh as they can. And so it'll be interesting to me to see how kind of Josh handles that. And I think for me, I'm going to keep an eye on, J on Jared Stidham as well. Yeah. I think that he had a, we obviously talked about a really nice day, or excuse me, nice night on Thursday night in Canton. How does he kind of build off that, right? What does Nick Mullins do over the next week? Do we see kind of a, a chip on the shoulder from Nick Mullins? Hey, Jared's getting all this, uh, this positive yeah. press. Like, hey, don't forget about me. This is what I can do. I'm a vet in this league as well. So I think watching the back of quarterbacks will be, uh, will be very interesting to me. And then and kind of we're at the portion of the program, I'm excited to see who's going to come back from injury, right? We saw Chandler mm -hmm. Jones back today. Brandon Parker was down. So I'm kind of seeing you, – you're not nervous about anything just yet, but I am going to start keeping an eye on who's there, who's not there, yeah. who's missed what amount of time, and start doing the math a little bit. We see if maybe Darren Waller comes back yeah. as well. You know, I haven't seen him haven't seen him out there in a bit, you know. And, and also, too, speaking of, like, particular guys we're going to be watching, I know we've talked about Zamir and everything like that, but I'm going to be watching him more because prior to that game, I think he only had, like, two days of practice. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I'm real curious to see, uh, you know, how he does in the special teams battles and things like that, you know, where he shows up on different groups and, out and, there. And Josh brought that up earlier this yeah. morning about his value on special mm -hmm. teams. Exactly. So that's definitely one area I'm going to be looking. Uh, you know, it's also specifically on defense, too. As, as these games come along, you know, more and, guy, more and more guys kind of pop. You know, your, your undrafted guys, Darian Butler, a guy that we've talked about a handful of times. Uh, and I'm going to – I'm blanking on his first name, but uh, Paulo Mao. 
Um, yep. The safety, you know, out of USC, you know, big body guy. He's a guy that a lot of the media people have been talking up a bit. So I kind of want to watch him a little bit more. He hasn't popped as much as I've heard other people talking about him, but uh, I'm going to be looking at him a, a bit more, you know, to try and get a better idea of kind of what his game uh, looks like. And I'm going to pull this up so that I make sure I do get his name right because I want to put some respect on that. And one. just another guy too, Isaiah Poloma. There we are. Yeah. And, and speaking of, of guys, just to kind of keep an eye on as we progress through the uh, the preseason, Matias Farley, another guy yeah. who I think really flashed, had a couple of really nice moments on Thursday night. Like, let's see how you build on this big fellow. Exactly. Like, that's another guy, and I think that we talk about it. Every single year, there are going to be guys, the non-sexy signings, the dudes that kind of come out of nowhere, that earn themselves a spot on the 53. Exactly. It's, you see it every year. And I would say this year, you know, because every now and then, you, you know, have seasons come across where one of those guys, you know, jumps off of the tape and becomes a starter. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to get that on this team, but I think we're going to get some really quality depth pieces from that group. Which is not a bad thing. Not at all. Not at all. Because that's, again, you have that competition where these guys go and it's like, boom, okay, those are those undrafted guys who come in on a cheap contract, and then in a couple years, all of a sudden they're starters. And it's like, hey, I remember when that guy was, you know, going off in 2022 training camp, and then that, you know, building throughout the system, he takes over, and all of a sudden becomes one of the better guys in the league. And that's how the ecosystem is supposed to work, right? Yeah, that is how it's supposed to work. And the teams that do it really, really well are typically the teams that end up winning games in January and February. Well, Jesse, we have talked about a lot. We have a lot of practice to watch in the coming days. But on our way out, 30 seconds to plug, my friends. Where can the people find you? Man, on News Three LV Channel Three on your TV, we're going to be up there. Me and my guy Brian Salmon, obviously getting you guys geared up for this home opener here. We're excited to hop back in there so you can catch us on there and always on twitter i'm always tweeting about the raiders this time of year at jesse news 3lv there you go so freddie pascal jesse merrick my man ray uh, in the booth keeping us all even payton who does a fantastic job and everyone in the control room thank you thank you for hanging out with us and we will catch you guys at the end of the week for our next episode of the raiders training camp podcast presented by sirius xm sirius xm puts you inside the raiders training camp Catch all the info on the team, plus your music, talk, comedy, and more. Subscribe now and get your first three months free. Be there with the Raiders.